Dry brushing is one of the most valuable tools you can use when painting. I find it super helpful. I'm gonna take a flat or, well, this is really actually a bright, and I'm gonna take a filbert brush here for this example. So I wanna start with a gradation of color. So let's say I wanna go from pure white on one end, all the way up to maybe a solid blue on the top end. And the way that I'm going to use my dry brushing technique is I've got to think about some of the values in between because I can't easily go from just a solid dark shade to a light shade or vice versa and make it look smooth. So what I want to do is I'm going to start by mixing. I'm going to start on the dark end and move to my light end. So I'm going to start with the darker value first. Add a little bit of, of white to that color and mix it together. And then I'll continue to lighten the color. So to dry brush, the key here is to make sure that the bristles are loaded. I'm going to make sure that bristles, the bristles of the brush are super, super dry. I'm going to dry them off with my, my paper towel. I'm going to make sure that it's really loaded. So I'm going to go to the edge of the blob of paint. Now there's not much paint here. If I had a big blob, I'd always go to the very edge and just pull it away into a new area, push and wiggle, turn over, drag some more if I need to, push and wiggle again. And now you can really see that the bristles of this brush are loaded, but I don't have any thick goopy paint. And in fact, and I'm going to grab a clean paper towel here. What I can do is I can actually wipe off my paper towel, any paint that's around the outer edges. So I'm actually pushing onto this. You can see I'm depositing some paint and I just have a little bit of paint left. Now I can go to the edge of the blob of that darker blue and I'm gonna straddle. So I'm gonna make sure that that brush is half over the dark and the light. And every few brush strokes, I'm gonna go back in and repeat the process. I'm going to go in and you can see already how there's those little crackles of color. That's how we dry brush. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna load a little bit more and come down a little bit more. If I don't have enough of a transition, so if there's still a real definitive block now that there's almost no paint on that brush, I'm gonna go back up and over some of that dark so that the transition evens out. Even though that dark blue is dry, this lighter blue will nicely layer over top and I'll just keep adding a little bit more white to my color, mixing new paint if necessary. I'm either gonna wipe off my brush or clean it by tapping it on the bottom of that receptacle of water, rubbing it back and forth and then drying it off. Again, getting all the water off. I'm squeezing it between the paper towel. Going to this lighter blue pushing and wiggling, pushing and wiggling, wiping off any excess. Again, straddling halfway above and below the color I already have, just to start myself on that right path. Maybe grab a little bit more if necessary. You can always add more paint, but you can't remove it once it's on there. You can wipe it off even more and go back in and again, above. Now I don't want to overwork it. The more that I rub that brush in the same spot, the more that you have a chance of the paint removing some of the pigment and then seeing the background through. So I'm just gonna do it a few times, leave it, clean off that brush. Again, dry it on that paper towel. And I'm going to mix some more white in with my blue. So I'm just getting lighter and lighter. And then I'll load it again, pushing and wiggling, wiping off if necessary so I don't have any thick goopy. Again, overlap what I had from before. And right now I'm kind of holding this brush straight up and down because the color is fairly translucent already anyway, and it's fairly dry. I don't have a lot of it on my my brush, but if you're finding that the effect is just too strong, hold that brush almost parallel to the canvas. In fact, 
when you're doing small areas and you really want a gentle transition, that's one of the best ways to do it. So I'll just keep adding a little bit more white until I move towards almost pure white. until I'm almost into pure white territory here. Now, the reason I do this transition of dark to light by adding more and more white a little by little is because if instead I had the dark blue right next to the white, for example, and went to try to blend or dry brush that white and that blue, here's what would happen. So I'm just gonna drag some white down, push and wiggle it, wipe it off here. And I'm just gonna let this dry for a smidge so I can show you because if it's still wet, it will blend um, nice and smoothly. And I don't want it to bend smoothly so I can give you an idea of what that's gonna look like. While I'm waiting for that area to dry so I can show you um, how you would make a mistake in going from a really dark dark to a really light light and vice versa. I wanna show you a difference between a hard edge and a soft edge. So for example, I'm just gonna put two circles in here, two spheres in white, and one of them is gonna be more of a hard edge. So for example, this one here, a hard edge is where you have that crisp line from one value to another or one color to another. So for example, from white to green here, We've just got a nice hard edge circle. But if I wanna make a soft edge circle instead, I'm gonna start with the base circle, wipe off my brush, and then start dry brushing around the edge. Now, as I go around the edge, I'm gonna follow the shape. The shape is round here. If it was a petal, I'd just do one edge. If it was a, a cheek, I would just follow along with the edge. And I'm wiping off my brush after I push and wiggle it into the white to again, get rid of any little excess paint. If my towel is wet, I've gotta make sure I'm using a dry area because I don't want any moisture on this paint other than the paint itself. Now, as I go around the edge, you can start to see it gives me this dry, crackly, soft, fuzzy look. I'm not worried about perfection. And I'm just gonna go in and make sure that that edge is really soft. Now, a lot of times with an object, once I've finished dry brushing, I might wanna go in and again, add some of that white to the center or whatever color it is you're using in case you've wiped any off. And the purpose of this soft edge is to make this look fluffy. So it's not crisp. And you'll notice it does something to the value too. On the left, and even though these circles are exactly the same size, this circle looks much bigger because it's got a hard edge all the way to the edges, whereas this one here is soft, so the value artificially looks lighter. Even though it's not lighter, it just has softer edges. The whole value of this looks lighter. Even if I go in and put a nice gob, a nice thick, goopy gob of white in the center, making it really bright, this will still read as being lighter. So it's a great option for things that you don't want to be in the focal point or for things that are in the background. So if you had uh, a painting you were doing of a flower with trees in behind, maybe the flower would have more hard edges and contrast and such. And the background, those trees in the background would be kind of fluffy looking, soft edged and uh, a little bit blended. Now, in advance of another demo that I wanna do, I'm gonna grab some blue here, a nice deep darker color. And I'm just gonna paint a strip of blue. I'm not adding any water to this color, so I'm making sure I have enough paint on my brush to fill in those little gaps that you find in the canvas. I'm just gonna smooth it out. I'm not worried about edges here. This is just an example I wanna show you of how you can use water 
to lift out areas of pain. And part of the reason I'm showing you this is because this is one of those things that can happen to you by accident. If you're working on a painting and it's not fully dry and you spill some water on it or something, you try and clean it up, it can cause some effects that you don't want. So real quick, I'm gonna take that blue, I'm gonna just push and wiggle. Oops, actually I wanted to go from white to blue for that first example here where I wanted to show you what not to do. So the reason I stepped it down by getting lighter and lighter is because otherwise, if I just go straight to light, I'm gonna dry that off. So I've got some paint on my brush. Now, if I want a dry brush between these two areas, you can see how the dry brush looks kind of hazy. It doesn't look nice. Even if I dry it off a lot to try and really blend it, what happens is I still just get this really kind of foggy look. It makes the color look a little bit ghosted instead of this nice transition. So that's why you want to step down your values. All right, now the example I want to do here on this little area is I want to show you what happens if I spill water on my painting. What the best thing to do is just to let that evaporate on its own. Don't try and clean it up. So if I'm in the middle of working and I spill water, I leave it. I don't try and clean it up because here's what's happening if I do. And this could be a fun effect that you might want to use. If I push this paper towel on here, mimicking what would happen if I was cleaning it up, I get these perfect drip size holes. So while you're working, be careful about excess water. Once the paint is completely dry, you won't have any issues. But when it's still damp, if you try and clean it up, you'll just carve holes. And the only way to fix this would be to wait for it all to dry and then paint more paint on top of it. So even if this happens by accident and you don't like it, no stress. Let your paint dry and then cover it up. Because if you try and cover it up while it's still wet, it might just carve out even more of that background. Like if I was to just rub this. Yeah, see, I just create more problem. So just let your paint dry. It's kind of that balancing act of letting the paint dry before dry brushing or taking advantage of it while it's still wet. And depending on where you're at and how hot or humid the area is that you're in, the paint could dry faster or slower. But the whole only way to know is to play with it and try it.